Hello, uh, my name is Brett. Um, I'm one half of the Daddy and Rocco RC channel. Rocco's not with me right now. Um, but I thought I'd just do a, a quick little video. Um, it's not really to do with the bike or my son's bike, um, but mainly to do with struggles depression, anxiety, um, something I've had all my life up to the last three years. Um, I might have touched on this in previous videos, but mainly this video is just for all the people that are going through depression, anxiety, if it's got so bad that you're feeling suicidal even um, there is a cure uh, it took me 40 years to find that cure I've tried everything you know it's something that's then started when I was a child uh, you know we all have different upbringings some of them good some of them bad um, I had a good mother and I had a good father but at some point in my life very young um, they divorced and to cut the story short I ended up with a stepfather that was very abusive very violent very aggressive short tempered um, and he, he treated my mother so bad. He treated us children pretty bad too. Um, but I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just saying that, you know, this kind of journey and depression and anxiety sort of started then when I was a child, when I was quite young. Um, other things happened in my life which is this isn't a, a sob story because um, I don't look at it that way anymore I used to think I was cursed all my life um, I used to think you know when am I gonna get a break and there'd be times where I feel happy and you know it's short-lived and it goes downhill pretty pretty rapidly um, but what I'm trying to say is for all the therapy so-called experts um, trying to help me medication I've tried in my adult years trying to heal myself learning a little bit about psychology and biology and all those things I, I've, I've tried everything to try and help myself but the only thing that ever helped me was the day that I shouted out as a non-believer I shouted out into the air God if you're real help me and within an hour my life changed I was a non-believer as I've said in previous videos um, but that day God opened my eyes and I was shocked to even find out that he was real I was also shocked to find out that his name was Jesus, the son of the father in heaven. Uh, this was the one I used to take the mick out of the most, the one I used to mock the most. And I could see that these Christians, they were good people, but it's just, I don't know, there was something inside me that used to mock and criticise and I used to just see hypocrisy is what I used to see. Uh, I used to see what, you know, people that were professing themselves to be Christian being hypocrites. And I didn't know much about Christianity but I, I knew that they were meant to be good, meant to be loving, forgiving. Um, and I didn't really see that in my life. Um, 
But that day that I shouted out to God, I said, within an hour, I was doing the prayer of salvation. And I felt like ice cold water rushed through my body. And I went from crying with pain and hurt and suffering, wanting to end my life, to crying with joy. A joy that I can't explain, because at the time I never knew it was possible to feel that elevated. Now, before I had children, um, you know, I, I was, I was taking drugs, I was taking ecstasy and, you know, when I take a, an ecstasy pill, you know, going out raving or partying, um, I used to get this, like, euphoric feeling, um, and I just loved everybody, everybody that was around me, I was like their best friend and, do you know what I mean, and when the party's over, and you go in on a come down, then reality starts to set in and you kind of feel like I gotta keep searching for that high to make me feel better. I was searching for something that I didn't know. I didn't know what it was, but I was searching to not feel pain, not to be suffering. Um, I would drink and I ended up, uh, after a motorbike crash, I ended up starting to take cannabis, which was originally for the pain, and but with my anxiety and depression, I couldn't sleep. Um, I was getting very, very little sleep. I was plagued with thoughts of, you know, I was hating myself, but then I felt like there was always this thing telling me that you ain't, you ain't worth it. Nobody loves you. Nobody cares if you just kill yourself now. It wouldn't make no difference to anybody. And, and I had that for over 30 years. 17 years ago when I had my first daughter. And I stopped taking all drugs. But I was still, by that time, smoking cannabis. And I felt like I needed to smoke this cannabis to help me to sleep at night. Um, or to chill out, just to relax. You know, after my bike crash, um, I was constantly in pain and I worked very, very hard. I was a panel beating spray. I've been a builder as well, but I, I would work very, very hard and it would be kind of my distraction. I put all my efforts into what I'm doing in regards to work whether I'm doing a full respray or custom paint job or whatever, restoration. I put everything into it to try and take my mind off of things and I felt like if I was, so my wife's trying to call me on my phone now, I think it's dinner time so I'll, I'll wrap this up. But I was, tr I was looking for distractions in any way I could find them just trying to find distractions and and I found that when I started my business and I, you know that's one big distraction from the way you're feeling but eventually it caught up with me and I thought you know what's the meaning of life why why am I going through this why everything I try to do every try I try you know I'm a type of person I'm talking a minute babe I'll be in in about five minutes, all right? You said about half an hour ago. I'm recording a video, sweetheart. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, what was I saying? That's life, I'm not gonna bother editing out. But yeah, I did say I'd be in five minutes ago and that was like 20 minutes ago. But anyway, Dinner's ready. But what I'm trying to say is, everything I tried, nothing helped. It only got worse every week, every month. I felt like I was, you know, further in the dark. Um, I just wanted out. I just, I just had enough. And when my business started failing during lockdowns, and then 
me and the wife split up and I lost my children and it just went seriously downhill. I just thought, you know, this was, this, that was the worst I was ever feeling in my life. Regardless of anything else I'd been through, I was at the worst. And I'd been suicidal a lot. And I've had at least four or five attempts at ending my life. But there was a good side to this story. That day I found God, I felt like ice cold water rushing from my body. I, I can't explain it. And I started crying with joy. I felt unconditional love. I just, I just, I don't know. I didn't know what was happening to me, but all I could feel was love and joy. And everything just seemed to go from rock bottom to, you know, I felt joyful for the first time for everything I'd been through, all the bad stuff. Suddenly I was joyful about it. I started forgiving the people I thought I could never forgive. One of the first people I forgave was my stepfather. You know, in the past, before I was saved, I used to say to people that I could never kill somebody. It's not in me. But there's one person that could po possibly push me close to, to doing it. And that was my stepfather for everything he'd done to my mother, to me, my brother and sister, and to other people, because I've seen a lot of evil. Um, I've, I've seen him beat people up and, and get joy out of it, you know. He was a hard man, um, but he used to actually get pleasure out of hurting people. But, now, if, if, if a good thing came out of that, I never took any pleasure in hurting people. I, I, I never raised my hand to my wife. Um, I've never been violent towards my children. Um, and coming from a broken home, I've always tried to hold on to, to my family, to the best of my ability, but with my anxiety and my depression, I'd end up giving up. I, I would end up giving up, like there's no hope. But that day I found God, everything changed. Within five minutes, I rang my ex-wife and we got back together. Within an hour, I had my children back. Um, I was surrounded by love. That's what it felt like. I just felt everything was different. I thought the only cure to my anxiety and depression was to have something that's not possible. And that's a brain transplant or all my memories erased. You know, everything that was negative in my life, just have them erased. But that day I found God. All my memories, instead of being so negative and dark, they turn it into positivity and light. Now I don't, I don't, I don't want to have a memory wipe. Um, I wasn't given a new brain with new memories. I was given joy, and love, and hope. Um, still, I, I cannot give give it justice on, on what it felt like. But my whole life changed forever. I gave my life to Jesus. And for three years now, I've been anxiety and depression free. My life has turned around. We've had two more sons. Um, both sons I delivered myself. Um, that would be the third child out of seven. Um, three children I've delivered myself first one wasn't planned uh, the midwife wouldn't send the ambulance I was on the phone to her and I was a non-believer so I, every swear word was coming out my mouth then and this midwife saying send the ambulance you know effing this and effing that you know next thing I know the, I could see the baby's head so I had to deliver and that was Angel and today's her 
sixth birthday. So that was six years ago. Um, I was a non-believer then. Something, something opened my eyes back then. That's why we called her Angel. Something opened my eyes, but still I didn't believe in any God. I just felt like there's something I couldn't explain going on there. As a believer, um, we had our son Isaiah, who um, we delivered ourselves during the lockdown. And then recently, four months ago, we had a son called Joshua, who we also delivered ourselves. You know, we done that trusting in God, no pain relief, no, no medicines or anything like that. Joshua is strong and healthy. We did it trusting in the Lord. Um, now somebody that suffered with anxiety and depression, something like that is not even possible to plan because you're just overwhelmed with worry and this. But since finding God, I'm confident now. I've always been camera shy. I've never wanted to be on stage in school. There'd be times when I was confident, and that's when I was fighting people. That was the only time I was confident. Um, when I was over overwhelmed with anger. Um, if somebody tried to bully me, suddenly I'd be strangely confident, just overconfident, and I would fight back. Um, you know, I was probably the shortest and the smallest one out of all our friends, but I would be the one whenever it comes to bullying, I think it stems from being brought up with my stepfather. Whenever whenever there was bullying going on when I was young, you know, bullying towards someone else, I'd be the one standing up and in that person's face. Um, and it's quite strange because a lot of my mates were like two or three times the size of me. But I would be the one jumping up to defend them. Um, but then the rest of the time, out of those kind of situations, I, I felt broken, I felt weak, fearful, anxious, a constant worrier. Um, but the day I found God, all that changed. All that changed. I no longer uh, touch cannabis. It was a good five or six months after finding Jesus, I tried to convince myself I still needed to smoke that. I still needed, you know. But God revealed to me that I needed to give it up. It was a stumbling block for me. And it was me still relying on cannabis as some sort of crutch, which I didn't need anymore because when I was smoking cannabis after being saved, it had a negative effect on me instead of feeling chilled out and stuff like that, it done the opposite. So with God's help, I gave up cannabis, cold turkey, just stopped it. And that's been two and a half years now. Um, I don't want for it. In fact, I feel like God's given me a massive detest towards it, like a disgust. I used to love the smell of cannabis. Um, I would stick up for cannabis to anybody. I was like a cannabis advocate, you know. Anybody going through stuff, I say try cannabis. Well, I didn't realize that, you know, the cannabis was fueling the anxiety and depression I already had. Um, it made things a hundred times worse. When I was thinking, it was making it better, but it wasn't. But. Five or six months into my relationship with God, I was convinced um, that it had to end. A tiny bit of anxiousness to stop in something that I've been doing for 20 odd years. But it was easy. It was easy. I trusted in the Lord. The Lord strengthened me. And I wouldn't want to touch it again now. Um, I'm just, I'm free from that, I'm free from anxiety, I'm free from depression, I feel stronger than I've ever felt. Three years ago I'd never get in front of a camera, I have been in front of a camera but most of the time I was high on 
cannabis. Now I'm, you know, completely sober, drug free, cannabis free. Um, I'm a little bit tired, but apart from that, I'm, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm only confident in doing this um, because I know there'll be some people out there that are struggling with depression, anxiety, call it mental health, you know, that's what the the top scientists and doctors call it, they call it mental health. But our mental health is some sort of dark spirit. They hate us. They hate us. They they masquerade as angels of light. A lot of people get caught up into all that new age. My mum got caught up in all that stuff. And it kind of makes sense because when she got caught up in all that sort of stuff, that was when things were going really bad at home, really bad. And I didn't believe in any of that stuff. My mum would try and convince me and I was like, oh, I ain't believe, I'm only gonna believe in what I can see. But it's funny how things turn out because now I'm trusting and have faith and believing in something I can't see. And I say I can't see it, but I feel it. And, and God has showed up so many times. You know, they say faith is believing without seeing. Well, by having enough faith, your eyes get opened up. And you see God everywhere. You don't see him in a physical appearance sort of thing. But you see God's hand on everything. God will tell you things and guide you to things. And you realise this, you know, this has happened and it's been nothing of my doing or anyone else's. This has been God. He's led a lot of people to me that are suffering and I'm overwhelmed and joyful when I get used to do what I feel is God's work and I get confirmation you know God shows me that he shows me that this was his will that he led this person to me now am I a perfect Christian no have I got everything sorted Am I struggling with things? Yeah. Life is not easy. And if it is easy for you, if you've had a life and it's been easy all the way through, you're going to be in for a shock when things get hard. So what I say to you with my heart is that you have a God that loves you. He doesn't want anyone to die. He doesn't want anyone to perish. Life is sometimes suffering. And through that suffering, something's built in you. We live for other people. Somewhere around you, if everything's all right with you right now, and you're happy and everything's going good in your life, there'll be somebody close to you that is suffering. That feels like they've got nobody. No love, no light, no hope. We're on this planet to learn about love. Our life on this earth is like a grain of sand in a desert. It's, it's so short, so small compared to eternity. Because after we die, we spent eternity, which is a long, long time. It's a never ending time. We spend that in either hell or in heaven. We spend that with either God or Satan and all his dark angels. Satan's biggest trick, his biggest lie is to convince people that he doesn't exist. Because if he doesn't exist in people's eyes, then God doesn't exist. But Satan does exist. 
He's ruling the world right now. He's bringing this world to its knees. He's going to destroy every single, every single financial institution. Dad? Hang on a minute, sweetheart. Can you come in, please? Okay, I'll come in now. Is that Angel? Yeah. You right? Yeah. Come here, sweetheart. <coughs> I'll introduce you to my daughter. Is the kitchen door shut? You want to shut the kitchen door, sweetheart? First, and then you come in there. Come on in. Why are you in here? Oh, it's a bit cold, isn't it? It's freezing. I'm shivering here. I'm talking to the camera. I'm telling everybody about Jesus. This is my second daughter called Angel. Do you want to say hello? Hello. This is the one that God blessed me with delivering just me and her mum in the bedroom when the midwife wouldn't send out the ambulance um, I was blessed with delivering this one and um, when I found God when I found Jesus the only way I could describe what I felt I got seven children now back then it was five no four one two it was five. It was five children back then. And the only way I could describe what I felt when God saved me was like, I've been at every single one of my children's birth. And at that time, this one, I delivered myself. So that was an amazing experience. I, I couldn't, I was truly blessed with that experience because there's nothing really compares to the birth of your child when you hold that child for the first time and you feel that unconditional love but birthing this one myself the first I was the first person to touch her and it was amazing absolutely amazing so how I used to describe being saved by God was like at that time all five of my children being born at once and put into my arms and I just felt that overwhelming love and that love was coming from God because God is love. And this is why we called her angel. Because she is a little angel. So I just want to say children are a blessing from God. They're a gift from God. And we've been blessed now with, since you, another four children. I have to keep adding up on my hands to work out how many children I've chosen to make up. But it's your birthday today, aren't you? How old are you? Six. Not five? Not five anymore. She's six. She sounds a little bit American because she watches a lot, watches a lot of Christian content, content. And a lot of them are American, so she's developed a bit of an American accent, which is quite funny. We take the mick out of you, don't you? Don't we? Sometimes. But you know we're only joking. So, God bless you. What does Jesus... Oh, here's Rocco now. Is Rocco, that... is that kitchen door shut? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. So Rocco's coming out now. Come we got We've got a party to you, haven't we, to have... Watch out. Watch out. Right, come here, sir. Hello. So this is Rocco, toothless Rocco. He's losing his baby teeth and uh, <laughs> getting adult teeth. He's been a bit naughty lately, but you're going to turn it around, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So. Dad, your bike looks amazing. Oh, thank you. I got, I got, I got to fix yeah. your bike now. I've got to put a new carburetor in. And oh, your bike looks amazing. Do what old monkey did. <laughs> right then, oh, the tent nearly knocked the camera over there. Right then, guys, you go in, yep. tell mummy I'm going to be in right now, okay? Yes. Just end in this video and I'll be in. So, it's two of my children, two of my tribe, there's seven. Two of them have just come, well, I say two of them, there's two. 
from a previous marriage, TJ and Demi. Um, I've not seen them for seven years. Demi got got in contact with me probably about a month or two ago now. Um, so there's, you know, that's a massive blessing that she got in contact with me because God revealed to me three years ago that they were going to be back in my life. He was going to get me ready for it. And when Demi contacted me, oh, I brought so much joy to my life. Um, I'm hoping that soon we'll be able to meet in person. My son TJ was the younger one, my first son. Um, things aren't so easy. He's not made contact with me yet, but I'm. I have hope that that will change soon. Um, and maybe it'll be through my daughter Demi, you know, that he chooses to contact. But I'm not going to rush anything. Everything in God's timing, and. One day, they will join my family, which is a big family. Um, seven children. Wow. Thank you, God. It used to always be a burden. It used to feel like a burden, like a noose around my neck, you know, having at that time one, two, five children. I felt like I've got to work harder. How am I going to pay for everything? You know, since I found God, I actually closed my failing business down. Um, I closed it down and we've wanted for nothing. We've wanted for nothing. God has provided for us. We're better off now than when I was working 90 hours a week trying to keep a business afloat. Trying to keep the walls from the door. We're better now. Um, and I'll be looking into... Um, going back into work I don't know if it's going to be custom painting or restoration I'm not too sure wherever God leads me um, but right now with me and my son we've been buying secondhand stuff and selling them on and you know not really to make a living or any profit but mainly just to fund our hobbies you know but we've not wanted for anything. You know, God has provided all our needs. Um, we, we are truly blessed every day. Every day. So, I'll say this to you. God loves you. Jesus died for you. To take away your sins. They were nailed to a cross. And on the third day, he rose again. And... We're coming up to what they call Easter. I don't call it Easter. I call it his death, burial and resurrection. Passover. It's a Jewish holiday. Um, that's what we celebrate. We don't call it Easter. I know the world calls it Easter, but you know, I won't get into all that and all the egg symbol and Ishtar and what it truly means. This man-made religion and tradition and all this other stuff. It's all nonsense in God's eyes. These religions. A lot of these churches are corrupted. They confess with their lips Jesus, but they deny his power in their life. So I'll say this, God loves you, he died for you, and he's resurrected on the third day. He wants a relationship with you, not a religion, not man-made tradition. He wants a relationship with you because he loves you, he cares about you. So give it some thought. And if you're struggling, call out to God like I did. I was in, I didn't believe. But God showed up. He showed me. He won't try and convince you he's real. He'll reveal himself to the ones that truly want him, need him, 
We think we can do it on our own, we can't. We're sinful creatures. But he's righteous and just. He is love. So keep your, open your eyes. Have a think about it. And if you're desperate, call out to him with a sincere heart. And believe that he does love you, care for you and want the best for you. He wants you in heaven with him. When this life is over, he wants you in heaven with him. So take care. Be thankful for what you've got. There's people in the world with nothing. God bless you. Take care of your families. And I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully this time with Rocco. Peace.